Uh, what a great picture. Yeah, but the response was even better.
Hello and welcome to Schaumburg, Illinois at the Schaumburg Boomer Stadium today where the York Dukes take on the Maine South Hawks in what is just the Dukes' fifth game of the year. They stand at 3-1, and one, Maine South 1-4. and four. Their lone win coming off of Fremd High School. And Chris Danko on the mound for the Dukes today. Connor Choi along with me is Zach Sokitis. The infield is Ryan Lazowski at first base. At second base is Nico Ruggieri, Josh Fleming at shortstop, and Paul Reedy making his return at the hot corner. He was out for the first week of the season due to a back injury, but he's back and healthy. Owen Chael behind the plate today, and Chris Danko on the mound. First pitch on the way, in there, down low, ball one. And leading off is Constantine Coins for the Maine South Hawks, followed by Logan Tomlinson, Cole Mutchler, Marco Couture, Chris Stuss, Vassal Apwa says there's a foul ball hit back. One and one the count. Lucas Stojakovic, Zane Gurney, Eric Fugate, and Nathan Sarah in the outfield. You have Drew Gami in right. Noah Hughes in center. And Austin Java in left field. Fastball misses up and away. The count is two and one. Zach, what are you looking for in today's matchup? You know, we got to be looking at uh, making sure we don't have to be going right after strikeouts the entire game. You know, maybe some ground, easy ground balls. Oh, yes, There's a f fly ball in the right field, and it'll fall for a base hit. So Coins leads it off with a single to shallow right field as Gami just didn't have a play on it, and it falls in front of him. And there's the leadoff man aboard for the Hawks. You know, I was out. As I was saying before, uh, you don't always have to go for strikeouts in baseball. Ground balls is a very viable option also. Yeah, Danko could use a ground ball right now. Gets himself into a double play here. Yeah, a little 6-4-3 action. Main South playing a very difficult schedule, losing to three very good teams. As Danko fires in a strike and to Logan Tomlinson, who's playing third base today. They lost... York lost their first game of the season yesterday to Lincoln Way Central. And the bats have been like the weather, just a bit cold, but you know they can heat up at any time as there's a foul ball go out of the stadium. Dukes played at Dooley Health and Care Field yesterday when they took on Lincoln Way Central. Danko ahead in the count 0-2. He comes set the pitch. Swung on and hit into center field and slipping is Hughes and this one's going to go past him. On his way to third, heading around home is Coins and he's going to score standing up. The throw to the plate is not in time as there's a double for Logan Tomlinson and the Hawks strike first. Yeah, the field here earlier before the game started was super icy. They had the grounds crew out here with... Uh, Lawn leaf blowers, they had shovels trying to get the ice out, and it shows right there that it's just very slippery still out there. Yeah, this game was originally supposed to be played at 11 a.m. They pushed it back an hour, mm -hmm. likely due to the weather, like you just mentioned, Zach, and you see it just playing a little bit of a factor. It's cold and still icy. Danko checking at third, but they're going to say he touched the base. And that's going to bring up Cole Mutchler. The right fielder batting third. Yeah, Hughes just slipped out there in center, Zach, and cost the Duke the run, but unfortunately, as much as so bunch strike one, it's going to score coins. Marco Couture on deck. He's the starting pitcher for Maine South today. Danko comes set. Fires in strike two. So Mutchler now falls behind 0-2. Zach, what do you got? What are you throwing him here? Uh personally, I'd go off speed and maybe uh change up. He'll try and swing out of his shoes probably. I think you're right. You don't want to put it anywhere near the zone, especially with the way they've been hitting. They've also been hitting the fastball. They're definitely looking for a fastball off him. They're trying to swing early, so a changeup would definitely be very good in this situation. Yeah, they're looking to attack early, but falling behind have been the last two batters, but it didn't matter. As There's a base hit in the left field. This one will not score a run as the stop sign is given to Tomlinson, but Mutchler continues 
as he rips an 0-2 single, goes opposite field, and Danko's in some trouble as the first three hitters for Maine South have all gotten a hit. You know, I think Danko's trying a little too hard for the strikeout right here. Go go inside, jam him. It's a cold day. It's definitely going to hurt, and it's going to make him back out of the box a little more and give you a little more space to work with. Couture gets the first one. Danko bounces in a changeup. Trail able to block it. Couture shows bunt. They say he held, so it's one and one or one and zero. Oh. Danko throws back to first. Not in time. It'll be safe. Wazowski getting the start once again. He's found his new home at first base sack. He played the hot corner quite a bit last year, but Paul Reedy really solidified himself in that spot. Couture shows bunt again, fouls this one straight back into the netting. Counters now one and one. And just quite a few position changes. They return 12 seniors, Zach, but 12 juniors on the team, many of whom are making an impact, but some familiar faces like Josh Fleming and Ryan Lazowski. Fleming, who's been on the team since uh, about halfway through his freshman year. Couture shows bunt again. This one's a strike from Danko. Beautifully placed fastball. Running right in the outside part of the plate. Now, Zach, if you're, if you're the Dukes, would you take the double play and just give up the second run? Or you want to be conservative, especially with the way the bats have been playing, but it's not going to matter. Couture just took a half-hearted swing at it, and he's down on strikes. Yeah, he really just blew that by him. I, don't, I think he was definitely waiting, sitting for the changeup or the curveball. Uh, yeah, he just really just swung out like a sword. Yeah, Danko went back to the fastball, but I can understand the thinking behind it, Zach. You know, you've been hitting the fastball, so maybe he's going to try and switch it up and throw you a breaking ball, but instead he just blows that mid to high 80s fastball right by you. New batter as first pitch curveball in there for a strike to Christos Vasopoulos. Vasipol is hitting fifth, so now there's one out. Runners on the corners for the Hawks. Danko throws back once again. A little bit closer this time, but diving back safely is Mutchler. This one's inside for ball one. Look to be a slider that didn't quite get the break it was it needed. A one and one Danko set. He fires big swing and a miss at the high fastball. So Vasapoulos goes down one and two. And Danko once again ahead in the count. And Zach, he's only fallen behind a one batter, that being Coins, the leadoff hitter, when he hit the single into shallow right field. Other than that, he's been ahead, but Maine South has done a great job protecting with two strikes. As here's a fly ball in the left field. This should be playable. Coming in is Jeva. He makes the grab. The throw home is going to hold Tomlinson, and both runners stay. And now Danko has two outs with the runners staying put, still on first and third. You know, that's a great play right there. You know, it's a cold day. You know, people are going to get jammed, so he was playing in a little bit. And it perfectly went to him. He knew it was going to be in, and he got the play done, and he chucked it in, stopped the runner from scoring. Quite a chilly day, Zach. Wind blowing more towards right field so that you can expect to see the shift on, especially if it's not a super pull hitter. But that will really help as the pickoff. He's out. What a play by Chris Danko picking off the runner and stranding men on the corners. However, the Hawks score one on three hits, but Danko does a great job coming back in and picking them off. And that's how the first inning ends. Maine South up 1-0. Dukes coming up. Gami Danko Fleming to start it off. You're watching York Dukes Baseball here on York Sports Network.
bottom of the first tier in Schaumburg. Here's the defense for the Maine South Hawks at first base. Eric Fugate, second base, Nathan Serra. Shortstop is Christos Vasopoulos. And third, and at the hot corner is Logan Tomlinson. The outfield, Constantine Coins. Out in center field is Zane Gurney in left and Cole Mutchler in right. Behind the dish is Lucas Stoyakovich. And on the mound for the Hawks is Marco Couture. Couture sitting at between the, low, the high 70s to low 80s with a fastball, curveball, changeup, and slider mix, and he's got a dangerous top of the lineup with Gami Danko and Fleming leading it off. But this Duke's lineup really just trying to shake things up a little bit. They've struggled trying to get things going consistently. They do have six extra base hits, a couple of triples and some doubles, but consistency is key, and it's the weather is not helping them at all, but if it warms up, I know the bats will follow suit. But Gami trying to make do with what he has as he fouls the first pitch straight back. Just out in front, goes down 0-1. Gami, center fielder on JV last year, now finds himself in a right field with Danko's pitching as there's a breaking ball too high. One and one the count. Couture's pitch is fastball in there for strike two. Gami now down one and two. And Zach, one thing of note to just keep in mind is, you know, these Duke hitters, I feel like are falling behind early and it's just hard to catch up, especially when you're down. There's a curveball. Got me able to get a piece of that one and fouls it off to stay alive. Chris Danko, the pitcher, on deck. Danko, three-year varsity starter. Was a three-sport athlete up until this year. Did not play basketball due to a wrist injury as Gami hits this one and it's off the glove of the second baseman. Gami's gonna leg it out. And then it'll be interesting to see how the score is there. He hit it really hard, but on f it was right at Sarah and he couldn't just scoop it out of the dirt. And it should be an error on the second baseman for the Hawks. Now Chris Danko steps into the box. Danko takes the first pitch outside, ball one. Danko, one of the few two-way players on the team. Really him and Noah Hughes this year, really the only two. As Gami goes, Danko swings and misses at a pitch in the dirt. Throw way over the head of the shortstop. Vesapoulos and Gami slides in there with a stolen base and now there's a man in scoring position with nobody out. Duke's trying to fight for that run back. Danko swung and missed at a change up in the dirt. Couture set. Checks back on Gami. Now the pitch. Danko grounds this one right to first base. This will move Gami to first but there's an Bobble, and they throw it away at first base. Danko on his way to second, coming home to score. Gami and the Dukes have tied it off of back-to-back -back errors from Maine South. Two, two, hitters, two, batters, two, two batters, two errors, and now it's a tie ball game. The first baseman, Eric Fugade, bobbled it and then threw it away when Couture went to go cover, and that scores Gami with ease and puts Danko in scoring position with the three hitter, Josh Fleming, stepping into the box. Couture set the first pitch to Fleming. Down low, ball one. I mean, Zach, that was a, just a really interesting first two batters. Couture getting the soft contact. However, his fielders behind him can't 
make anything happen as Fleming launches this one to left field. This one's going back, and it is going to be dropped in left field, and this one's going to score another run as the Dukes take a 2-0 lead, and Fleming aboard second, and Danko scores standing up, and you know, Zach, I'm not 100% sure, but I don't even think that hit the glove of Zane Gurney, so I think that counts as a hit. Yeah, it, it does, but the pitcher cannot be happy about his fielding, his fielder's fielding ability right now. As that, there should be three errors, but technically it didn't hit his mitt, so they'll, they'll give him the hit. Which is crazy. I mean, back to back to back, pretty bad plays. The pitcher's making great, great job. You this know? could be a long day for Couture as Lasowski hits this one straight back. The ball almost just hit Aiden Reedy. <laughs> Aiden Reedy, the twin brother of Paul Reedy, so it's in the jeans to catch the baseball if it was coming at him. You know, he's the water polo goalie. I think he's got it. Lasowski down 0-1 now. And, you know, Couture seems like a contact pitcher, soft contact pitcher. There's strike two on the slider. Lasowski down 0-2. But if your fielders aren't making plays, Zach, you know a soft a contact pitcher cannot be effective in it. Really not to his fault, but it'll just be a long day for him as there's already been two runs. You know, as yeah. this one's thrown away, it'll be a wild pitch. Fleming heads to third. This pitcher's got to kind of take the game into his own hands, try and go for the strikeouts, actually challenge the batters into 0-2, 1-2 counts. Tour still ahead of Lazowski has a 1-2 count, still a favorable count for him. Lazowski got to shorten up the swing and protect. Runner on third, just has to put it in play, and he fouls this one straight back, and he stays alive. No outs. With the heart of the lineup still going as Fleming on third base. Anything to the right side should score him. Anything in the air would score him as Lazowski hits this one in the air to right field. Should be playable. And Fleming's going to tag. The throw home is going to be cut off. And Fleming scores. Lazowski does his job. Sacrifice fly to right field. And the Dukes are now up 3 to nothing. You know, I mean, this is a pretty rough game so far. I mean, uh, Bain South has four errors. They have more errors than hits Two right errors. now. Two errors. Well, they counted it as... I guess it's oh, double, double error. Double error, yeah, four errors. Bobble in the throwaway, and I guess they did call count Fleming. Fleming's an error, but I'm not sure I would count that an error. If it doesn't hit the glove, I don't know if it's an error. I'll give him the double. Feeling generous today. <laughs> Nico Ruggieri digs into the box, looks at strike one. Didn't b bite at that first pitch slider. So the main south finally gets an out. No, you got to face Ruggieri and Reedy next. As Ruggieri lines this one to left field, this one is playable and caught by the left fielder, Zane Gurney. So he makes up for the misplay on Fleming's at bat. Hard line drive by Ruggieri, which is right at Gurney. As Paul Reedy comes up to the plate for his first at bat. Of his first senior, appearance. Yes, first his appearance. Senior season. Of his senior season. Coming off a back injury, Reedy committed to Carthage College to commit continue his baseball career and looks at ball one upstairs. Couture, the 1 0 to Reedy. Paul swings and misses. Count evens out now, 1 and 1. One one from Couture. Reedy follows this straight back. Now down one and two. Owen Chael, the catcher on deck. Couture with two outs. Just the bottom of the first. Couture. His pitch. Inside curveball. Good take by Reedy. Now the count evens out. Two and two. It's 
Gator. Reedy. Just a tad late on that one. Fouls it off. Stays alive. He times him up right here. He's probably going to send this ball to the moon. Gator set the pitch. Spiked in the ground. The count is now full. Reedy waits the full 3-2 pitch, and this one's going to hit him in the head. Paul, no. And Paul Reedy heads to first, his first at bat. Ends with a little dome piece off the curveball. <laughs> Whatever gets you on base. The coach is coming out here. Oh, get, he's just giving the ball to the up. I thought he was going to come out and maybe talk to his pitcher. Tell him to calm down. You know, his teammates are starting to, starting to make a couple plays out there. So he can start to rely on them a little bit more as the game goes on. According to the scoreboard, the official scoreboard, there's zero earned runs allowed. For me, it's one. I gave Fleming the double as this one spiked in the dirt for Owen Chael, 1 0. Reedy runs back to first. comes set. The 1-0. Chael rips this down the line, but it's going to go out of play. Foul wall. You know who, who uh, Couture reminds you of, Troy? Who? Oh. Paul Skeens. He's got that nice stash going out there. <laughs> Paul Skeens. Interesting comparison. <laughs> Curveball in there for a ball. 2-1-1. The count. Chael ahead. Chael hits this one high. This one should stay in. It is playable and it is caught. Oh, a snow cone. It's a little bit of a jump scare, but that will end the inning. Forgate makes the catch, but Duke scores three on one hit. Denko going back out for a second inning of work. Stojakovic, Gurney, and Fugate do up for the Hawks. You're watching Boys Varsity Baseball here on York Sports Network. Top of the second here, 3-1 lead for the York Dukes. Chris Danko back on the mound for his second inning of work. He faces Lucas Stojakovic, who's behind the dish for the Hawks. Danko comes set. First pitch of the second inning is upstairs, ball one. Danko comes set. 
And Stojakovic hits this one to right field. Should be playable for Gami, who makes the catch. One away. And that'll bring up Zane Gurney, the left fielder for the Hawks, number five. <coughs> Gurney had an eventful first inning out in the left. Now trying to make an impact with the bat. Three hits for the Red Hawks in the first inning. Trying to keep things going. Danko's first pitch fastball is outside, ball one. Danko comes set, fires. This one fouled back. Count evens out one and one for Gurney. Danko comes set. One and one turns to one and two. Beautifully placed pitch by Chris Danko. And Zach, he's showing great command of the fastball early on in his game. Swing and a miss on a curveball. Swords Gurney, and now there's two away. Danko picks up his second strikeout, and that'll bring up Eric Fergate, hitting eighth. That was an absolutely nasty pitch right there. I mean, he, he can make anybody look foolish on that pitch. Forgate. Looks at a first pitch fastball in there for a strike. Forgate, the third base, the first baseman for the Hawks. Danko's second pitch. This one's chopped, and Danko. Gets there, scooped up by Lazowski. Three up, three down for Chris Danko in the second inning. And Maine South puts a zero on the scoreboard. Che um, Hughes, Jeva, Gami coming up for the Dukes in the bottom of the second. You're watching York Sports Network. Bottom of the second here in Schaumburg. Noah Hughes leading it off for the Dukes in the eighth spot. Playing center field, so a bit of a new position for Hughesy. Couture out for his second inning of work. First pitch curveball and inside for a ball. Couture having a little bit of trouble with the curveball right now. Keeps throwing it really inside, almost hitting him almost every single time. Really just not breaking the direction he wants it to as he goes to the fastball that's Blown away, so Hughes up ahead. Two oh, Hughes way ahead of that one and rips it into the parking lot. Two and one. The two and one to Hughes. Down low, three and one the count. <laughs> 
three and one. Hughes lines this one into center field for a base hit. And Hughes leads it off with a single to right center field. And that's going to bring up the number nine hitter, Austin Jeva. Jeva in a little bit of a different spot. Was the leadoff hitter at the start of the year, now in the nine hole, but we see a lot of teams doing it like that. They're true, pure contact first players batting in the nine spot, and then they go to a little bit more of a power hitter in the one spot. You see the same thing with the Braves, where Acuna hits leadoff, and then they have Michael Harris in the nine spot. That's kind of what they're doing with the Jeva. First pitch to Jeva is inside, near the head area, nearly hits him. Pitcher having a little control issue this game, um, almost hitting the right-handed batters very often at every single count. The one out of Jeva is hit to right center field. This one falls for a base hit. Hughes on his way to second, and he gets there standing up. And back-to-back -back singles for the Dukes. Austin Jeva aboard now with a single of his own, and that's going to bring up the top of the lineup. And Drew Gami digs in. Reached on an error. Stole a base and then scored his last time up. So had a trip around the bases, but... Looking to do it again with a man in scoring position. Hawks giving Hughes a very generous lead. Gami bunts it. Oh, just a little bit too hard. And it's a foul ball. So strike one on Gami. As me and my partner, Connor Choyer, absolutely freezing outside. It's a super cold day out. It's like, it feels like 25 degrees, a little wind. <laughs> and when you're sitting still in the shade, it just does not feel great. Everyone here is in the sun. <laughs> Gami hits this one to the shortstop, and he knocks it down, but it's going to be an infield single for Drew Gami. He knocked it down, and that was all he could do. Everybody is safe. Base is loaded. Vasopoulos just couldn't come up with it. Now with bases loaded and no outs, we got Chris Danko up, who's a very good power hitter, back for the left side of the box. Danko a dangerous pull hitter for the Dukes, swings and misses out in front of the first pitch changeup from Couture. Danko reached on an error his last time, the double error to the Hawks' first baseman, Eric Fugate. Danko, once again, fooled by the changeup. So back-to-back changeups for Marco Couture. And now he's behind 0-2. And Couture's going to step off, get the signal again. Danko is a pretty good uh, fastball hitter. If he really gets a hold of one, he'll take it out of the park. But goes he goes back to the changeup again, and he's going to bounce it in. He does struggle with the off-speed sometimes. Yeah, I've yeah I've noticed the same thing, Zach. It's it's those changeups that start belt high and just die at the very end. And I mean, those are hard for any hitter to lay off, especially when it looks like a fastball. And Danko's willed himself back into that bat, even in the count now, two and two. being much more patient and one thing Tinko rarely does is chase a fastball out of the zone so he's able to lay off there Danko fouls it off stays alive just got a piece of it Two balls, two strikes. Couture set. The pitch to Danko. Fouled down the right side of the field. So once again, the count remains two and two. 
new pitcher warming up for the Hawks on the bullpen. We'll see how much more tank Couture has left, or how much more gas Couture has left in the tank as Danko takes ball three. Started down 0-2, even the count up, fouled the last two pitches off and now took ball three. So showing great plate discipline right now. Josh Fleming on deck, still no outs. Three and two. Danko takes ball four. Couture walks in a run after being ahead 0-2. It's an RBI walk for Chris Danko, and that's going to bring up Josh Fleming with the bases remaining loaded. You know, Couture right there, you know Danko got him by an air last time. So you really should just go right at him and stop trying to get him to swing at stuff that's nowhere near the zone. Right, you were able to get soft contact last time. Now Fleming takes a first pitch curveball for a strike. And now this might be someone you want to be a little bit more careful with. He was really the only one that him, Fleming and Ruggiero, the only two that hit a ball hard that was in play. Fleming with the questionable double as he swings and misses at an outside fastball. And now he's behind 0-2. So still no outs. Blasowski on deck. The bases remain loaded. 4-1 to one the score. Dukes up. Fleming. As this one going to get away from the catcher and standing scoring up is Austin Jeva. And another run scored for the Dukes off the wild pitch. And that will move Danko to second. Gavi to third. So runners still in scoring position. But that takes away the force out and another run scores. Now, uh, the pitcher here, Couture, has to be very careful of flowing. He's known for being for hitting the long ball, one of the best uh, power hitters at York. One and two to Fleming. Swung on and missed on the slider. Fleming down on strikes. So Couture gets a much-needed first out of the inning. And that's going to bring up Ryan Lazowski. One out for Lazowski. Runners on second and third, and I call time here. Man in the pen hasn't come in yet, but Main South is just gonna talk a couple things over, maybe some situation, some fielding situations. And they break it up. Quickly talking over how to attack Lazowski at the plate. So Lazowski steps in. Couture set. First pitch to Lazowski. Is a breaking ball. Clips the strike zone called. Lazowski down 0 and 1. The one that Lazowski and this one's a check swing. This one is over the head of the second baseman. It's going to score Gami. Danko gets the stop sign at third base, and that is one of the more peculiar RBI base hits you're going to see. Nonetheless, the Dukes extend their lead. You know what they say, you know, a hit is a hit, no matter how you get it. You know, he didn't really look like he did a full swing there, it's like half swing, but it did hit the barrel of the bat and it still got down. Just over the head of Sarah at second and just plopped into shallow right field, just on the just past the dirt and now Nico Ruggieri steps in with runners on the corners first pitch curveball in the dirt ball one tour set Ruggieri takes ball two 
a little bit of a pitch out in case they thought they would send Lazowski. Although I don't think Col Coach Kalal wants to run into any outs that he doesn't have to. Lazowski goes. Ruggieri skies this one. This one's still in play. They're going to have to send Lazowski back. He's hustling back to first. And the catch is made by the third baseman, Logan Tomlinson. And now there are two away. And now Paul Reedy digs in. He's last plate appearance, hit by a pitch, so does not have an official at bat recorded in his first game back. But he's got runners on the corners with two away. York with a 6-1 to one lead here in just the second inning. They scored three runs in both innings. Katora comes set. Paul Reedy fouls this one straight back at the net. Reedy worked the count to th uh, three and two full count. Got hit in the head. They throw back to Lazowski. He gets a hand on the base just in time before Fregate can get and or swipe down on Lazowski. Reedy down 0 and 1. They go back again and can't get him again. So trying to keep him at bay and eliminate the steal. Runner goes. This one's upstairs and this one is going to be not in time. The ball comes loose and that's going to score Danko and that increases the lead. Ball popped out. Main South executed the pitch out perfectly. But when Sarah tried applying the tag, he didn't have the ball. You know what they say um, from baseball terms. It's BBB, ball base backup. And right there, he was trying to go after the base. But you got to remember, you got to get the ball first. Or else you're not even going to be able to make the play. Count now one and two. And on second, seven to one the score. one in the dirt Lazowski running and they're gonna get him no he, he dodged the tag unbelievable completely swam around the tag that's unbelievable Ryan Lazowski I thought he was gonna be out by a mile Zach but that was an amazing play by Lazowski right there some fancy maneuvering I mean you don't see people dodging the, the, uh, the person with the ball very often Oh my god. Reedy follows this one straight back. Count remains two and two. And wow, I just, you don't see that every day. Back to back stolen bases for Lazowski. And now he's 90 feet from home. You can run off the score and make it a seven or run game. Paul bounces this one right back to Couture who flips it to Fergate and that'll end the inning. Duke score four runs on three hits. And Chris Danko going back out for his third inning of work. Top of the third coming up soon here on York Sports Network.
Top of the third here in Schaumburg, Illinois at Wintrust Field. Chris Danko out for his third inning of work. He's going to face Nathan Sarah stepping in for the first time. First pitch fastballs upstairs. Ball one. Sarah gets the start at second base today. Danko comes set. The pitch. Sarah is going to hit this one. Playable. Ruggieri calls for it under it. Makes the grab. One away. Now back to the top of the order. Constantine Coins single to right field last time up. Danko's first pitch down low, ball one. One another count to Coins. Swing and a miss on some high or. Uh, Blazing fastball right down the middle from Danko. Belt high. Count evens out one and one. Danko comes set. Ground ball right to Fleming. Tolazowski in time. They get out coins. They're able to retire him. And now there's two away. It was a great play right there by Fleming. He just waited for it to bounce. Got it off the hop. Easy play to first. Spite it field being frozen. The infield was in great condition. <laughs> Only the outfield just a little bit slippery, but it, it's a couple degrees warmer, so it should be okay. Now Danko curveball down low to Logan Tomlinson. Tomlinson doubled his last time up. As this one's fouled straight back. One and one now, the count. Danko set, delivers, ground ball right to Reedy. Steps up, fires the first in time. One, two, three for Danko. On, makes quick work of nine, one and two. Chael Hughes, Jeva up next inning for the Dukes. Seven to one, still your score. Midway through the third, you're watching York Sports Network.
Welcome you back. Start at the bottom of the third here. Pitching change for the Hawks. Left-hander Quinn Huber on the mound. Couture's day is done. Quinn Huber faces Owen Chael. Chael fouled out to the first baseman last time. A high pop fly. First pitch outside, ball one. Huber comes set, fires. Chael hits this one to center field. Playable and caught. So Chael's retired. One away. Noah Hughes steps into the box. Score is seven one right now. York. Hughes single to right field his last time up, takes strike one. Hughes, a two sport athlete, was part of that hockey team that made a state run. Now it's baseball season. Hughes pops this one up to second base and play is aid. Two gone. Now digging in is Austin Jeva. Jeva singled to right field his last time up. Now faces Huber, who comes set, first pitch. Ground ball, down the line, and Jeva's got a base hit. He's gonna try and turn it into two. The throw to second is not in time. Jeva's in there with an extra base hit, and he's in there now two for two with a double. Attacking on the first pitch, ripping a hard ground ball down the line. And a two-out extra base hit for the Dukes could be what they need to continue piling on more runs. As the top of the lineup now back up once again, Drew Gami, one for two, reached on an error and had an infield single. Base hit should score Jeva. This one's going to get away from the catcher. It's a wild pitch from Huber, and Jeva is now 90 feet away. From home. Only the third inning, York scored seven runs. They've scored in every inning, but this could be the first inning without a run as there's two outs. However, man, 90 feet away. Javon third. Got me ahead, 1 and 0. Shoots, but, and he almost caught him by surprise as Tomlinson was way deep. Not, not sure if that one would work again, however. A little more aware now. Just couldn't get it past. Tried pushing one down the third base line. Now, Huber comes set. The one and one to Gami. Down low, ball two. Chris Danko on deck. He's 0 for 1, reached on an error. And he walked his last time up. Hewer set. Gami hits this one right to the third baseman, Tomlinson, whose throw is up high and in time. So close, but... That's going to retire the side. Dukes can't score. Jeva with a double. That's all the offense they have. Stranding a man on third. 
Top of the fourth coming up soon here on York Sports Network. We'll be right back. Top of the fourth, Chris Danko comes back out for his fourth inning of work. Just one run allowed on two hits, which both came in the first inning. Since then, he's been perfect. Hasn't walked a single hitter. Hasn't given up a hit. Starts it off with a curveball in there for a strike. One to Cole Mutchler. Mutchler, one for one today. Got picked off to end the first inning. And now just a little tapper that's going to be foul. So now Mutchler down 0 and 2. The 0 2. To Mutchler as he taps this one foul, stays alive. Still behind. Marco Couture on deck. Inko comes set the 0-2 once again is fouled straight back and Mutchler stays alive. Not giving in to Danko, who's thrown him back to back upstairs fastballs that he's Mutchler's been able to tap away. Goes to the off speed, curveballs outside. One, two. Oh, just a bit outside. So, two, two. The count evens out. Mutchler working the count. Called strike three. Mutchler down on strikes. Held his swing, but it was a fastball right down the middle. Danko picks up his third strikeout. Now Marco Couture steps in. First pitch to Couture. Is grounded to Reedy and hits off his shoulder. No throw to first. Bad hop right there. Unfortunate for Paul. It's going to be the first error of the day for the Dukes. And Couture reaches on an error by Paul Reedy, which brings up Christos Vasopoulos. Couture, a little two-way player action. Vasopoulos. 0 for 1. Flew out to left field the last time up. Danko's first pitch is... Nearly... An off speed that hits him. But not. Not gonna call it. 1 0. 
because it just nearly hit him. Foul tipped into the glove of Owen Chao for a strike. So, Shirley, do you know why we're at the stadium here today? That's a good question. I, I don't know. They've played three games so far in neutral sites, two at Dooley Health and Carefield down in Joliet, and one at Wintrust here in Schaumburg. Just not entirely sure why. As Danko's fastball is low and away, count is now 2-1. and one. Was this the stadium? Or am I, I might be thinking of wrong, but is this the stadium that they played at last season for the playoffs? Or is that a different stadium? I think it might have been this stadium. Fly ball center field. Hughes goes back and makes the catch with his shoulder completely spun around. Making the grab. Now there's two away. Retiring Vasopoulos. And that's going to bring up Lucas Stoyakovich. Yeah. What an amazing it play might, right there. It, it might have been this field, Zach. It might have been this field. If it wasn't this field... Something very gosh, similar. Gosh, similar. I'm trying... Yeah, I'm just trying to remember. I just... I, I can't seem to put my finger on it as Chael gets up, but no back pick. One of Stoyakovich is hit on the ground. Fleming's there. Gets it to second in time, and the side is retired. Danko remains perfect since the first inning. And the Dukes going to come back up. Danko, Fleming, Lazowski do up. Bottom of the fourth. Coming your way in just a moment. You're watching York Sports Network.
bottom of the fourth here at Wintrust Field. Chris Danko leading things off. New pitcher for the Hawks. It's Peter Zimmerman, the right-hander from the bullpen. Danko sends this one straight back, and it'll be a foul ball out of play. Okay, back a little bit. Danko down 0-1. Zimmerman set, bounces it in. Danko 0 for 1 with an error and a walk. And now they're going to call time and go and talk things over with Zimmerman. Two more. Main South players beginning to warm up in the pen. No action for the Dukes. Danko been excellent since the first inning. The 1-1 one -one to Danko. Zimmerman set. Danko, big swing and a miss on the fastball. Really wanted that one back out in front of it. Curveball just a bit upstairs. Danko stays alive. Now the count evens out two and two. Nearly hits his foot. Now it's a full count. Danko really working it here. Comes set ball for Danko heads to first. His second time drawing a walk today. And he's been aboard in all three trips to the plate. That's going to bring up Josh Fleming. Fleming. One for two with a double in the first. Struck out his last time up to bat. Danko always a speed threat. Got to be careful. Does not go. Fleming rips this one foul out ahead of him. Fleming down 0 1. Swing and a miss. And a fastball down low. Now 0 2 for Fleming. Zimmerman checks on Danko. Comes set. Swing and a miss. Fleming down on strikes for the second time today. Goes down swinging, and that's going to bring up Ryan Lazowski with one out. Danko goes. This one's outside, and... Stojakovic couldn't get a grip on it, so 1-0 the count to Lazowski. Danko steals second. This one inside the Lazowski now 2-0. Lazowski with a check swing, RBI base hit in a shallow right field his last time up. One of the, just one of the weirdest ones you're ever gonna see. <laughs> just can't even make up that hit, even if I tried. I mean, like, he like kind of swung out of that, but then he really didn't. So it's very weird. 
Very bizarre. It was a barrel. <laughs> it caught the sweet spot, which is why it ended up in the outfield. It's not something you see every day. Lazowski hits this one hard. Too much to handle for Tomlinson. The throw by the shortstop to first, and he throws it away. This one is going to score Danko. So an infield single for Lazowski. The throwing error by Vassell. Vassella Poulos. And now the Dukes lead by eight to seven. One, eight to one now on five hits for York. Zowski did not advance, but Danko scored on the throwing error. So man on first, one away once again for Nico Ruggieri. So one in the dirt, ball one. Ruggieri 0 for 2, had a hard line out to left field his first time up, then popped out to the third baseman. You know, it's just the pitcher should be in south, they're just having a rough day. I mean, it's super cold. It's, it's not fun Ruggieri for anybody out hits here. this one well to right center field, going back and making the play is the right fielder, Mutchler. So, speaking of rough days, Ruggieri with two well-hit balls that are just in the hands of the fielders, so. Not much you can do about it. No, you know. nothing you can do. And Zach, Zach, we've all had those days, you know, playing. You just, you feel like you've never hit the ball better, but you're 0 for 3. And then there's days where you're 3 for 3, but you felt like you haven't made a solid contact once. Yep. So, it's just how it goes. Paul Reedy digs in, looks at ball 1. Reedy, 0 for 1, grounded out to his pit, to the pitcher last time, reached on a hit by pitch his first time up. Reedy fouls this one straight back. Now the count is 1 and 1. Zimmerman. Gets the sign. A little stretch there. Yeah. Small lead for Lasowski at first. Ooh, Curveball. Coming in from Paul's head again. Yeah, if you remember, he was hit. First time he was hit, it was a curveball on a 3 2 count. Everyone's just trying to go piece Paul today. Reedy's first game back. Still looking for that hit. Zimmerman throws the first time, tries picking him off. Lazowski gets back there with plenty of time. His lead isn't all that too, all that big. Zimmerman delivers. Reedy line drive right to the shortstop Vasopoulos, and he makes the grab. And that will retire the side. Duke score one on one hit and an error from Maine South. Top of the fifth coming up soon. You're watching York Sports Network.
Top of the fifth year at Win Trust Field. Pinch hitter for Maine South. It's going to be number. F oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no pinch hitter. Zane Gurney steps in. The left fielder looks at ball one. Danko still going strong. Second pitch in there, also a ball. So Danko falls behind 2-0 and to the leadoff man, Gurney, this inning. Gurney batting seventh, playing left field as he smacks this one into right center field. And there's the first hit for the Hawks since the very first inning and Gurney aboard. And we're joined here by Aiden Reedy. Always a pleasure to come in and announce with the boys. And Aiden, just, you know, out of curiosity, just how good, how special is it to see your brother, Paul, just back on the field after, as that one's going to fall, lost it in the sun. And Jeb well, another air. away. And they're heading to third, standing up. is going to be um, Gurney. But uh, Aiden, how, how important was it for Paul to not only make a speedy recovery, but make sure he's fully healthy before he came back onto the field? You know, it was it was really important. He's you know he's been to a couple doctors and trying to get it all figured out because you know next fall or ne next spring Paul will be playing at the collegiate level and he wants to make sure that can still happen. And so he made sure to take his time with the with the recovery, but. Um, He's doing well, he's doing well. Absolutely, and now that's going to bring up uh, Nathan Serra. So back-to-back -back singles as Danko fires in a first pitch strike. Back-to-back -back singles for the first time since they scored their the first, first run. Yeah, in the first inning, Danko was perfect up until that point. But then uh nice line drive and then a uh, fallen pop fly. It'd be a little bit reminiscent of your playing days there, Aiden. Yeah, you know, I was never really in the outfield much, but uh, <laughs> if I ever was, I definitely definitely lost a couple in the sun. You know? <laughs> or uh, in the lights, you know, playing at Barron's 5, always got the lights going, never see anything. Curveball in there, strike three. Danko gets Sarah looking, and that's going to bring up Constantine Coins for the third time today. He's one for two, grounded out. To Josh Fleming his last time up. Danko gets the first out of the inning. Still has runners on the corners. Gonna need to keep a tight ship if he doesn't want one of them scoring here. Coins cracks this one to right field. It's gonna go out of play, so it's gonna be a foul ball and strike one. Just a tick behind that fastball. Pick off from Danko, not in time. Standing, getting there, standing up is Eric Fergate. Danko comes set the 0 1. Coins takes a fastball outside. So count evens out now 1 and 1. Full set home. I'm sure you'd be happy to be at home today because it, it is not, not baseball weather. It is. It is in the 30s. It is cold outside. I'm sure the bats are freezing. Hands imagine a stinger. Hands are stinging. <laughs> the hands are stinging for oh, sure. Oh, man, imagine a stinger. That would be horrible. Two and one. We got half our equipment's freezing. Curveball on the ground. Oh, Reedy see a double play. Gets oh. one at second, so the run will score. Just hit a little bit too soft. Hey, that's a uh, well. We'll take that. We'll take that. Yeah, second out. They played a run, however, so it'll be an RBI fielder's choice for Constantine Coins, who sits at first base. It 
It's going to bring up Logan Tomlinson, the third baseman, as oh. he hits this one well. Center, center field. field. Hughes yeah. there. Makes the play. Third out. Danko retires the side. Scoring one on two hits. And Maine South. A little bit of an answer back. Now the score. Eight to two. Here. Bottom of the fifth. Coming up. You're watching York Sports Network. And here we are. Oh. Bottom of the fifth inning here in Wintrust Field. New pitcher, Christos Asapulos. Eight to one, or eight to two, your score, I should say. Oh, I said Main South didn't, didn't play to run as there's a diving play in center field. And it is caught. It's the final call by Constantine Coins. Wow, what a grab. And Shale winds out to center field. One away. Then we got Hughes up to bat. Hughes takes ball one in the dirt. Hughes one for two. Popped out to second bases last time up, but he ripped a single in the right center field in the second inning. Looks at ball two, so back to back pitches in the dirt. And Aiden, now that you're with us, you know, just what have you noticed in the game so far? What has been kind of the story of this game as Hughes hits this one well in the right field falls for a base hit and Hughes is aboard with a one out single second hit of the day for Hughes and that'll bring up Austin Jeva who's two for two well there's two things I noticed really one the bats the bats for both teams have been alive you know see see plenty of hits out there plenty of uh, forced plays you know and two is uh, there's some there's some field there's and you just can't against teams like these you just can't let that happen and I I obviously understand that it's it is freezing cold folks like I don't think I could stress that enough that it is it is chilly 
took some adjusting to definitely, but yeah. have to, had, Main South had to clean up the fielding, but unfortunately they weren't able to. Jeva pops this one up. Pitcher's fighting for it, and he makes the grab. Hughes having a little fun with him. Gets a couple feet off the bag. Jeva well under that one. He pops out to the pitcher, so now two away, but top of the top of the order, Drew Gami. One for three today. He stunned an error and had an infield single. Grounded out to third base his last time up. Left side of the infield, definitely deep. Got me oh, big swing, swing of the, the fences. First pitch. Whoa. The 0 1. Vesapoulos gets set. This one in the dirt. Way outside. Oh, under the legs of the catcher. And, he's and Hughes is standing. Gonna walk to second base. <laughs> one and one the count. Two away. Men in scoring position. Base hitch and score to run. Big gap between the center and fielder and left fielder. Gami. Oh, he gets hits hit. And that's the one. We got gotta, ice. That one's got to be tough. I'm sure the last thing he wants is ice right now. <laughs> that is true. Hey, can we get a hot pad out here? <laughs> but Gami gets hit and he's aboard. And that'll bring up Chris Danko. Oh, no. I'm sorry, not Danko. It'll be a pinch hitter, so. Danko's day is done. First pitch. Swung wow. on and driven to left field, and this one's just going to wow. die and falls. Let's see where a new pitcher is. Yeah, right. But pinch hitter was Jackson Bowie, who's retired. That's the third out of the inning, and that'll end the fifth. Dukes don't score. Top of the six coming up. You're watching York Sports Network. We're back here, top of the sixth inning. A lot of changes here Start for starters. We have Jack Lonergan on the mound for the Dukes. Big lefty. Big lefty. First pitch, fastball upstairs. Ball one to Cole Mutchler. And Danko's day is done. Final stat line, five innings. Four hits, zero walks, zero, uh, two runs, and four strikeouts as Lonergan bounces it in. Now, two all the count and some defensive substitutions. It appears we have Luke Pazinski at shortstop and Nick Allen now at third base. So, Paul Reedy's day is done along with Josh Fleming. 
want to rest some of their starters. To, they got a busy week out of them. the count lot again come set fires oh. upstairs <laughs> ball four take your base so Mutchler walks in five pitches not a great start for Lonigan <laughs> It's always tough to come out of the bullpen, especially when it's so cold. It's just really tough to yeah. get that arm going. Always tough. See if they're, if they're changing something. We see uh, T.J. Sokaitis warming up in the pen right now. Want to see surprise. Have him get some action. Nice stop by Pazinski. Can't Got turn two, but he fires the first. Great play by Luke Pazinski to get the first out. Will advance Mutchler to second, so Amanda's in scoring position, but the Dukes with a six-run lead. This run really doesn't mean anything. You're just looking to get outs and get out of the sixth. Exactly. Lonergan. First pitch swing. curve ball in there for strike one to Christos Vasopoulos. A oh, one pitch. Check swing. Check swing. But I Going think he third. held, but no throw from oh. Chael. So it'll be a wild pitch that advances much or 90 feet from home plate. Chael's got to get in front of that one. So one and one the count. One ball, one strike, one out for Lana again. Come set the pitch. Fastball outside. Two and one now the count. Lana again comes set. Fires. Ground ball. Ground Should ball. be playable. Lazowski. No oh one's gosh. there. Just a bit of a mental error from the Dukes. They just got switched up. Jack Kaminsky and Ryan Lazowski. Kaminsky, who just got in from second, was just kind of jogging over. I think it probably should have been his ball. But then Lazowski cut him off, but no one was covering. Leinergan did, didn't get to the bag in time. and Kaminsky didn't switch places with Lazowski and start going to first. So instead, it's an infield single, which should have been the second out. Yeah, those kind of errors are what happens when you're up big and uh, you can kind of just like get just that. Some, uh, some new players, a couple of them. You know, get that uh, completely doesn't yeah, matter mindset. Completely you know? a new infield besides Lazowski. Is there's a first pitch curveball in there for a strike. Lukas Stoyakovich digs in. He's over two today. Lined out to right field. A ground out. Um, six four fielder's choice to end the inning. Last time up. So Yakovich with a little flare. Kaminsky going back. Leaps and Caught makes it. the catch. What a catch. So Jack Kaminsky picking up the second out. So eight to three. Two up. Two gone. So Yakovich popped up to Kaminsky. And now that's going to bring in Zane Gurney, the left fielder. Base hit to right center field his last time. Broke up Danko's stretch of being perfect since the first inning. His four-inning perfect stretch. Or three-inning. Three-inning. Curve ball. Just a bit too low. Water going to get set Swing. swung on and missed by Gurney. Another great fastball. One and one the count. Lonergan gets set. The pitch and bounces in, in there and Vasapulos just a little bit off the base. 
So count. Two and one. Lonergan comes set and Gurney's gonna ask for time. Lonergan ready to go right away. Gurney skies this one. Right field should be playable. Catch is made and the right side catch. is retired. It's a great way to put a, put a stop on their momentum. Absolutely. Lonergan wow. takes care of business. Gives up just one run. Still a five run lead for the Dukes. Seventh inning coming up here on York Sports Network. One more to go. Top of the seventh here at bottom, Wintrust. Bottom, bottom of the six. Or bottom of the six, I should say. Here at Wintrust Field. Pitching change. New man on the mound. Troy's brain is freezing over. It looks to be uh, Jack Etchison. Number That'll bring the first batter that Etchison will see. Number to 23. The yeah, Luke Pazinski. 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 First pitch strike. Watches a strike down the middle. On deck for the Dukes. It's going to be Jimmy Connors. Jimmy Connors going to see the field today? Love to see it. Love to see it. Got to get all the all the fellas in there. <laughs> Are we going to see T.J. Salkaitis making an appearance? <laughs> well, he was the last pitcher in the pen, so you got to assume so. Yeah. Strike two Zinke. called on Pazinski. Pazinski watches the second one. Pazinski, a slow start with the bat so far this season, was the starting third baseman in the absence of Paul Reed, even now that Reedy's back, Pazinski moving back to where he would have started in the depth chart, takes ball one in the dirt. Ball, ball two, ball two. Ball two, I should say. <clears throat> Pazinski does have some pop in that bat. It was just putting it together in game. And really, I say this a lot, it's an adjustment for everyone to adjust from vars to varsity pitching, just the speed differences. Oh. As Pazinski holds a swing, count is now full. But you know, Aiden, it's you know it's tough for everyone to adjust. Even some of the best hitters on the team now had. Oh yeah, I know. Uh, when Ryan Lazowski got brought up at, towards the middle of last season, he struggled a little bit. 
but now he's, he's, look, he's yeah. looking pretty good. He found his footing towards the end of the year. Same thing for oh, yeah. Josh Fleming. Really exactly. struggled when he was a freshman coming up for the Dukes playoff run. But then last year, you know, he blasts, I think it was his eight home runs last season, and he, he had an, was by far the team's best hitter. Well, Sounds uh, about right. Was a West Suburban Conference Offensive Player of the Year. So all these accolades for him, and it was just one year difference. So I, I, these guys that you see now, most of them, will adjust. Pazinski swinging, swinging a miss. He's down on strikes. Pinch hitter for Lazowski here. Yeah, Jimmy Connors. Does that mean Lazowski out of the game out of first? Connors takes a first pitch for ball one. Swung on and missed. Strike one, so count evens out. One and one to Connors. Atchison set the pitch. Curve ball down low. Ball two. Good eye there. Fastball a little low. We just count to three and one. Absolutely, Connor showing some great plate discipline right now. Not swinging in the dirt like Javi Bias. Gotta love it. <laughs> Connor hey, blasts one. this one into left center field, but playable and will be caught by Constantine Coins. So now that's going to bring up Jack Kaminsky, pinch hitting for Nico Ruggieri. Kaminsky now in at second base. Nick Allen on deck for the Dukes. Now at third base for Paul Reedy. First pitch curve ball to Kaminsky. Down low. Ball one. One and all with two outs. Eight to three the score. Kaminsky swing and a miss. So count evens out one and one. Called strike two. Fastball. Kaminsky didn't bite, but it was right there. The one two to Kaminsky. Ooh, check swing. Swung on and missed. Ah. He did go around. They tag him. And Kaminsky down on strikes. As one, two, three inning for Maine South. Their first of the game. And it comes at the bottom of the sixth. Eight to three, your score. Dukes trying to close this one out. In the top of the seventh. And coming up here. It'll be Ben DeZillo to close things out for the Dukes. Zilla, one of those featured players on the hockey team last season. Can get up to the low low 80s. So Kytus still thrown in the bullpen. Chair losing that ball. <laughs> Gets a new one. <laughs> but uh, it'll be Ben DeZillo for the top of the seventh and hopefully for the final three outs here coming up on York Sports Network. We'll be back.
Alrighty, we're back here. Ben DeZillo trying to get the final three outs here. Eric Fugate, or Fugate up for the main South Hawks. DeZillo comes set, the first pitch at the top of the seventh. Here's a fastball for a strike. Good framework by Owen Shell back there. DeZillo was one of the top pitchers on JV before he was out with injury for the final month of the season. Just could not perform, but now he's back. Second pitch misses was a fastball. Excuse you, Joy. All right, Aiden. <laughs> one and one the count. DeZillo bounces in a fastball. Just goes to the backstop. Zillow comes set the two and one. Ball three. And now he's behind three and one. So kind of still throwing in the bullpen. So the gotta wonder what he's thinking the, over there. The pitching order still as scheduled. Danko, Lonergan, Dezillo, and then Sokaitis if needed. Dezillo trying to get through the seventh inning, but there's a Ball base the hit laced into right field. Just Kaminsky had no play on it. So, leadoff single for Maine South, and that's going to bring up a new batter, pinch hitter, number seven, Billy Z Zaitis. Billy Z. Billy Z. <laughs> Billy Z watches ball one. <laughs> Billy Z. So, one and out of Zaitis. Zillow set. Watch his ball too. So Zillow having some control issues early in the top of the seventh inning. Zillow comes set the 2 0. Low and away 3 0. Loses the ball. So. Again. Getting sloppy on defense here. It is just so cold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, I, I do not want to be in their shoes, that's for sure. No, not at all. But if you, if you Although their cleats might be warmer than my gym shoes, in all honesty. Probably. So I wouldn't mind being yeah. in their shoes. But if DK's putting you on that field, <laughs> you, you you gotta you gotta play till you gotta play till the play your heart out. Close it dead. Well, they, they don't they don't have whistles. Call it dead. Call it dead. <laughs> they don't have. Oh, sorry. Dizillo finally gets a strike. Count is now three and one. So set. Strike two. two. Yeah, should be strike two. Full count here, folks. So yeah. Dizillo looking to get that first out, to trying to make end this game. I mean, if you don't if you don't have to go to Sulkitis, that would be huge for the Dukes. You can save them tomorrow against their game against Addison Trail. Dizillo. Try throwing just over, not just a little, little, little slow, a little just a. Hey, remember, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. A little checking on you. Hi, hey, how you doing? <laughs> hey, how you doing? Perfect. I'm pretty Three, sure, two. I'm pretty sure you stole. Zillow. This one's hit. hit well. Left center field coming in and drops. Can't ball. make the catch is Jeva. So another base hit for Maine South. Man on first and second. Man in scoring Zero position. Outs. No outs. If you're the Dukes here, you just gotta you just gotta lock it in. You got plenty of opportunities. Gotta try gotta try to turn a double play here. Get this inning quick, and then quicker before uh, Main South tries to make uh, a comeback. Dezillo's first pitch is hit well in the right center field. Going back, the catch is made. Runners have to retreat. 
No one can tag, and there's the first out of the inning. So, so Kytus. There's a great grab by center fielder. So Kytus is now actually throwing some heat in the Yeah, bullpen. he's actually warming up, not just catch anymore. Throwing out of the stretch now. But Dazil does have an out. This one's hit on the ground. Should Return be playable. Play. Kaczynski no. slides, stops a run from scoring, but now the bases are loaded. But not the worst thing in the world that could happen for the Dukes. You still have the force out. Jail's going to call time. They're just going to talk things over. Zillow's now they can tag at any base. That's, yeah. that's what they need. Aiden, when was the last time you picked up a baseball? Uh, I played catch with my brother this summer. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Who's got the better arm? Oh, def definitely me. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Don't worry about it. You're ready here first. Aiden Reedy with a better arm than Paul Reedy. Like, he can make it from third. He can make that third third base to first base so but like uh you could see me in center field throwing throwing that all the way to the catcher like uh -huh. don't, even, don't even worry about it oh yeah get the, De get, definitely getting that runner out one and all the count and dezillo fastball down low new batter it's gonna be Jake Sober and Tansky His little comes set 2-0 to Zabrantansky. He shows bunt, bunt. pulls back. Is a strike. Right. Ump was taking his time on that one. Yeah. Oh. No sense of urgency. He must not be there. He, he must not be very cold. Uh, I see a couple layers on it right there. I think I think he's doing a lot better than us. <laughs> <laughs> the only smart one in the field. Yeah. That's for sure. Zillow misses. Now the count is 3-1. and one. So Kytus comes in from the bullpen. So... Definitely don't want to walk a run in here. This could very well be Tazillo's last batter. And, and he does he walk in a bat. run, so having issues with the fastball command and DK is making a mound visit. Yeah, Dave Kowal is going to come out of the dugout. Talk things over with Tazillo. And, and TJ is going to come in. Will be so kind of. Final two outs of the game. DeZillo's day is done. Just didn't have it. Eight to four with the bases loaded. So Kaitis looking to come in, potentially grab the save. Tying run coming to the plate. We'll be back in just a few moments. You're watching York Varsity Baseball here on York Sports Network.
Welcome you back to the bottom of the seventh. One out here for the Dukes trying to close this off. Tying run is now up to the plate. It's Marco Couture facing TJ Silkaitis. Silkaitis last appeared against their Dukes game against Wabonzi Valley where he dealt two innings, allowing no hits, no earned runs, did not walk anyone, and struck out four. What an outing by TJ Silkaitis trying to replicate that here. And now Coach Kalal calls on him for one of the biggest appearances a reliever has had to face this year. Couture flies this one right field, tracking it down, and this one is a fair there ball. Pick it up. And that's going to score a one score run. Two. Or two. One run. Oh, one run, my bad. <laughs> now eight my to bad. five is the score. Tazilla will be charged with that run. And so Kaitis got the weak contact, just a, a fly ball that just fell right on the line, right near the line. And it's a fair ball. Only a three run game here, folks. Five Ooh. runs on ten hits for the Hawks. So Kaitis gets this Pops one sky high. high coming our way. So, first pitch strike. Troy made an, an impressive catch there. Was not even close to it. <laughs> Fans at home don't know that. Troy, Troy made a great catch. Then a uh, pinch runner here. Yeah, it'll be number eight, Connor Griffin, going to run for Marco Couture. Jack Bodak in the bullpen getting loose. He had a nice game uh, on Monday. 0-1 for Silkitis. Fastball inside, ball one. <laughs> a little cold there, Aiden? A little, little bit, a little chilly. <laughs> Need the deuce. Uh, one and one. Out here to, so Change up home. down low. On, so two. Two and one is now the count with one away. Bases are loaded. TJ, TJ takes the call. So Kaida's set. I'm thinking fastball. Fires wow. fastball down low and away. So now three and one. Now so we just need some over the plate here. Things are getting a little dicey. It was a eight to three game. Two runs have already been scored in the top of the seventh with only one out and bases are loaded. So kind of set. Fires, ground ball, count is now full. And that opens the door to a little bit more. You know, there so kind of had to throw a fastball. Was nah. able to get a foul the way, but now that you opens the door to some off speed stuff. Oh yeah. And if he was early on the CJ's curveball. If he was early on the fastball, and if Silkaitis can get a slider over, he goes back to the fastball, ball four. Silkaitis walks in another run. And now eight to six is the score. This is now this is now what you want to see. So now the go ahead run is on first base. With still only one out, the bases remain loaded. Double play would be great right about now. Just got to let them put it in play. First pitch slider in there for a strike. <clears throat> so Kai just comes set. Cold? I am quite cold. Just in the toes. Check swing. Check swing. Did he go? They don't even nope. ask. So it'll be one and one. So kind of set. The one one. This Bang. one is hit. Catch and it. this one is going to fall. 
the tying run, rounding third. He's on his way home. The play at the plate is not in time. And the Hawks have tied it in what seems like an impossible comeback. Down eight to one, have climbed all the way back to tie this game. This is now what you unbelievable. Be eight to eight now your score. Now runners on second and third with one out, so now there's no more force. This is unbelievable. Walking into the top of the seventh, uh, Dukes were just trying to get three outs here, up five. They they thought nothing of it, but Main South Main South is playing. They're they're still out there. And they just scored five, tying the game. And Slider is gonna up. hit number five. And bases are Zane loaded. Gurney, and that loads the bases. And Kalal comes out of the dugout. Bodak running in. This could be. This it is, for Sokitis. Uh, I think we can see a little trick he ball. Does call, trick ball play. He does call Bodak out. Sokitis' day is done. Tie ball game 8-8 eight to eight here in Wintrust Field, and we are not done. We'll be back for the top of this, rest of the top of the seventh here. New pitcher for the Dukes here. Tie ball game 8-8. Eight, eight. Jack Bodak on the mound. Bodak a lefty. Can Steps off. Yeah, get up to about. About 80 miles an hour with the fastball. But he's very deceptive. Has great control. Especially with his off-speed pitches. But he starts it off with the ball. First pitch ball with the fastball. Went with the two-seamer. So bases are loaded once again with one out. New pitcher. Really not trying to let him get a piece of anything here. Going, trying to hit that outside. Outside pitch, you know. Two and all the count. You agree, Choi? Yes, absolutely. Swing Wait, and a miss at the high heat. That's what you need here. Peter Corinthos couldn't catch up. The 2 1 from Bodak. Strike two. Oh, wow. Love that call. Hasn't been calling that all day, but he gives it to Bodak there. I think he's feeling the cold. If he's feeling the cold, he wouldn't give him the call. <laughs> Walking and run, call game right there. <laughs> well, they can't do that. Yeah. York's the home team. This one's outside. The count is now full, so a huge at bat here. Full count. Basically you walk them in. Out. You're giving Maine South the first lead they've had since the top of the first. Boat that gets set. Go oh! strike three. Corinthos is down on strikes, and Bodak picks up the second out of the day. 
or the inning, I should say. And that brings up number brings seven. Number seven, Billy Zaitis. Billy Z. Your favorite, Aiden. Billy Z back back in the plate. Well, Billy Z is trying to give his team. Billy Z swinging. Something to get a piece of. 0 and 1. Oh, he's, oh, he's going home. home. The play at the plate. He oh, got him. They got him at the plate. They're able to get him out. Wow. They tried a, stealing home, and the, the Dukes escape. And now we head to the bottom of the seventh with the majority of the starters for York out of the lineup now. And we'll see how oh, that I plays out. We'll see what this, uh, what this bad noise is looking like. Yeah, we'll see how, we'll see how this plays out. It's Allen, Chael, the first two up in the bottom of the seventh. New pitching change for Maine South. We'll be back in just a few moments. Bottom of the seventh here. Five runs scored in the top of the seventh for Maine South. They've climbed all the way back from as big as a seven-run deficit here at Wintrust Field. And the Dukes look to Nick Allen to get things started. New pitcher for the Hawks. It's going to be Sean O'Dowd. And Aiden, what is the plan of attack here for the Dukes in the bottom of the seventh? Get on base. Get a run. <laughs> I mean, I don't think they want to be here any longer. Simple. And honestly, I think their bullpen is a little thin. It is. Allen smacks this one. This one's going to go out of play. So he's down 0-1. Allen's first at bat of the day. Takes ball one. Count is now one and one. Here's the pitch from O'Dowd. Inside. Ball two. So Allen jumps ahead in the count now. Love to see it. Rips one, one center field. In the center field and falling, but still oh. making the catch is wow. Constantine Coins out in center. And Allen lines out. We've seen a couple people slip in center field out there. Grass might 
might still be a little, little wet. Absolutely, and that'll bring up Owen Shale. Noah Hughes on deck. Let's see if they can guess I'm, I'm like in single, steal second, single, bring them home. What do, you, what do you think about that? We'll see. We'll see if the prediction is right. Oh, you let it go. First pitch, fastball in there, strike one to Chael. Chael 0 for 3 today with a fly out and a line out to center field and a pop out to first base. Swan's upstairs. Count is now 1 and 1. Strike two. So now one and two the count to Chael. Chael hits this one it. to right field. This one. It's oh, it's it. Chael rounding first and he's going to hold. But the Dukes have a man on with only one out. That's what we like to see. And the winning run is standing at first base. And that will bring up Noah Hughes. Pinch hitter. We're going to pinch run for Chael. Coming out is Nick Fisher, by far one of the fastest kids on the team. Love to see it. See, this is what I said. Single, steal second, single, bring him home. So let's, let's Hughes, see get it Hughes done. two for three today with two singles. Starting to sound like a movie. Aiden wrote the script. <laughs> if I wrote the script, I would have been out of here already. <laughs> <laughs> Three inning slaughter. <laughs> yeah, a little four inning slaughter. <laughs> Hell, we'll even give Danko a perfect game. <laughs> O'Dowd's first pitch to Hughes, who shows bunt. But this one's fouled back. Strike one. Hughes has two base hits today. On deck, Austin Cheva. Jeff has a double and a base hit. He's two for three as well. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Rips Hughes it. Hits this one. Foul. It'll be foul ball. Or foul ball. ball. The cover oh. ball. Had half ha half the players on the field confused about that one. They call it a you fair ball. ball. <laughs> yeah. They call it a fair ball, but Owen Chael still at second base was looking at the ball and that <laughs> just didn't put his head down and run, but Hughes oh, aboard. Uh, Fisher. Fisher. Or Fisher. Pinch, pinch running. I'm sorry, Fisher, but Hughes with the base hit down the line, and that'll bring up Austin Jevo. One man, one out, men on first and second. Runner in scoring position. Jevo with an RBI, with no RBIs as they throw back to second. But they call a block. They call a block on O'Dowd. Wow. And that gets rid of the force That's out. That's what we need. And Coach Lorenz is coming out of the dugout. He's going to want an explanation on that. They call a block on Sean O'Dowd. And that sends runners to second and third now. And now he calls time. He wants to have a chat with his team. So runners on second and third with for Austin Jeva, who's two for three. With one out. Now, you have to wonder, will he give the free pass to Austin Jeva, Aiden, to bring the force out, but then you're, take, you're rolling the dice, bringing the top of the lineup back up. Yeah, no, you just can't, you can't do that. You got, you got to try for an out here. You got to try for a strikeout. They're they're gonna bring they're gonna bring the outfielders in. Make sure they get these these bloops that the Dukes have been hitting. I haven't seen many deep balls hit today, have you? I have not. Not too many balls that were hit deep, partly due to the wind, which is blowing yep. towards left field, and this lineup is majority right handed hitters. Nonetheless, Jeva digs in. Fisher's going to take a healthy lead on third, third base here. I mean, they're going to give it to him. One yeah. away. Someone low and inside, so. 
wonder what the plan of attack is here set by Coach Lorenz. I'm curious as well what uh, the Dukes are planning. I mean, I'm sure they're just trying to get a... Oh, they call a strike. That's one uh, looked low and away, but the count evens out instead at one and one. The one and one to Jella. Still, still in a fair position here. Sky's the ball. Oh, it's coming towards us. And this one's foul, so now one and two. And now Jevo is going to have to shorten the swing up. You just have to put it in play. It is absolutely necessary. He's kind of candid. Jevo hits oh. this one to center field. This one is going to go drive. in the middle. The throw oh. home is not in time. The Dukes walk it off. The Whoa. Dukes walk it off. Austin Jeva wins it in an absolutely epic finish here in Schaumburg. The Dukes are victorious, nine to eight. Austin Jeva with the walk off base hit to right center field, and that'll do it. As the Dukes win in the bottom of the seventh. They were electric finale there. Absolutely. Thought the Dukes were throwing it away, but they still had it in them. They were up 8-1, to one, and they eventually Main South is able to tie it up, but they win it in the bottom of the seventh, thanks to Austin Jella picking up his third hit in an RBI. Dukes play tomorrow at Addison Trail High School. We'll be live on York Sports Network at 10 a.m. Thank you all for watching. I'm Aiden Reedy. Aiden Reedy. We'd also like to thank... Brendan Blanchett, Brandon Blanchett Lucas Santo, Ryan Brownlee, and Zach Sokaitis are helping out. We'll see you all tomorrow, and go Dukes.